Hello everyone. Hope everyone is doing good. I guess most of the people have joined in, so we'll get started while everybody hops in. Uh, I hope everyone can see the screen okay. Let me know if anybody faces any issue while sharing, uh, while seeing the screen. So first of all, I'd like to thank you all of you for joining the today's webinar with our guest speaker, Kasita Simpson. She is the owner and CEO at Simpson & Associates, LLC. My name is Devanshi and I am the Customer Success Manager at Locus. For people who are new to Locus, Locus is a legal practice management software that helps attorneys and firms to streamline their practice and manage their day-to-day -day processes for their clients. In today's webinar, we will basically be discussing how you can streamline your billing and invoicing processes for your clients and how you can take payments, how you can customize invoice templates, like everything that is related to invoicing from A to Z. We will be discussing this today with Kasita. Now I'll request Kasita to introduce herself. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. If you're in a time zone, that's still morning. Um, my name is Kasita Simpson. And as Dev said, I am the owner and CEO of Simpson & Associates, LLC. Simpson & Associates is a company that offers services nationwide. I like to think of us as a legal tech uh, solution to law firms. We bridge the gap between um, technology and their systems. We clean up CRMs like Locus to ensure that you're able to utilize the system efficiently and you have the capabilities to be able to uh, set up different automations and workflows and tasks and things for uh, recurring events that you have. We also offer paralegal services as well, and our services are nationwide. Today, I'm really, really, really excited to have this opportunity to begin talking about um, accounting and billing, utilizing Locus. I have been a Locus user for about two years, and I've been in love with the system. And uh, when the opportunity presented itself for me to do this, I jumped at it because I think that it is very important for firms to be able to have a really good understanding of how their system can benefit them when it comes to accounting and billing to be able to move efficiently and be smooth with what you're sending out and whether it's in terms of invoices or even something as simple as sending um, a, a link for someone to be able to make a payment for a trust account or something in that nature. Um, I am going to kick it back over to Dev to say anything further that she wants to say before I begin the presentation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kasita. That was wonderful. So before we start off, I'll just like to state some rules for the webinar. So the Q&A bot is live and our panelists will be available to answer all your questions that you send in. We can answer it throughout the webinar or we can take it at the end. Uh, please feel free to drop in all the questions that you have. And uh, this webinar is recorded. So this video recording will be uploaded on our YouTube channel as well as Facebook everywhere. So you can access it after the webinar. So I'll hand it over to Kasita for now so she can start with the presentation. Kasita, you can take it over and start the presentation. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. So the objective of today's webinar. The objective of today's webinar is to really, like I said, enhance the efficiency of financial and billing operations using the Locus Legal Practice Management software. This encompasses various activities. Sorry about that. Including processing invoices, adding expenses to matters, monitoring billable hours for specific cases, configuring custom rates for different teams and members, and all in all, being able to uh, customize user permissions for controlled access and modification of financial and billing data. The topics that we're gonna focus on today are going to encompass tracking and uh, billable and non-billable activities, adding custom rates for users and matters, how to generate and customize invoices, streamline invoice payments, managing trust payments on Locus, invoice overview from Locus client portal, setting up 
automatic reminders, workflows to alleviate invoicing woos, and customize user permissions. So to kick it off, we're going to start with uh, tracking and billing, uh, tracking billable and non-billable activities on Locus. You can bill your clients on hourly basis, flat fee basis as well. You can also manage your expenses for clients directly on Locus. There are two different types of activities when it comes to the Locus system. Um, as I said, there's billable and non-billable. Billable just means that you have the ability to charge your client on a flat fee basis or a time entry basis and add that to your invoice. For non-billable, it's going to come in when you want to just be able to show on the invoice the work that you've done, but not charge the client for that specific thing. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what that looks like, and we'll be able to walk through that together. Okay, so once you're inside of the locker system and you have a particular matter that you're billing for, one of the first thing that you can do is go to the matter. And then once you're inside of the matter, you uh, have the ability to add a, um, actually let me do a different person. Okay. So you have the ability to have both billable and non-billable time entries. And as you see here, there's some entries that are inputted that has the billable type. And there's also an entry that has a non-billable type. To be able to do this, all you would need to do once you're inside of the matter and you're under time is go to add time. And you would just add in the information for that particular time entry. And Once you have the information in here, you then have the ability to tag it. If it's non-billable, you can just tag it as non-billable and then go ahead and save that entry. If it were an entry that was going to be billable, you would just do the same thing and just do add and then put in that information here and make sure that you put in whatever you've worked on and then you would just save it as a uh, regular entry. And then you can see both of the, both of the options right here where uh, there's a billable and then a non-billable. To take it a step further, you also have the option to add it by using the plus sign up here. And by hitting the plus sign, you can go ahead and add a time entry from anywhere within the locker system. And you just put in the same information here, whether it was billable or non-billable, you make sure that you add in that information. Now, one thing that you will see that's different is that the rate that's here is different than the rate that was on the invoice for that particular matter. And that is something that you can do for your firm within your settings. All you To be able to set this up, you would want to make sure that as a firm, inside of your settings, you have your information here where you uh, ensure that the, um, give me a second here, sorry. You wanna ensure that <clears throat> from a firm standpoint when it comes to the information that you have for the, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. The information that you have for the rates are inputted here. So if it's going to be like a custom rate, you would go ahead and add in a custom rate here and it's under settings and then billing, bill settings, and then you'll come here and then you'll do add. And then you'll add a name for what you would want this to be in terms of like a, a template. So I already had one here for probate, for us to add one together. I'm just gonna create a family law one. And then you have the ability to add the custom right here. And then you can make it for everyone within the firm by just hitting everyone and then adding in the rate. So if I wanted to have in, let's say 350, 
for family law cases, I have the ability to add that here in the handing save. This will allow you to, when you're doing invoices, to ensure that the, the rate is applicable to the practice area that you're working on. Another thing that you want to also make sure while we're in settings here is you're going to want to make sure that from a uh, practice area standpoint, you add in the firm rate up here. So if the firm rate were different than 500, you would add in that hourly rate here. And then you would also want to make sure that you add in your target billings for the year and the work days also in this information here. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure all of these things are filled in just to ensure that when you're actually working on an invoice or working for um, a case in a specific matter that this hourly rate is already plugged in. Now, if it was a custom rate for a specific matter, what you would want to do to be able to have a custom rate for a specific matter is go into that matter and then go to the pencil up here at the top. And then you have the ability to come into here. And if the firm rate were not $500, I apologize. If for this case, you didn't want to charge $500, you want us to charge something less than that, you have the ability to come into here and do a custom rate and you can add the custom rate here. Now you can have a custom rate be for everyone within the firm, or if there's specific people within the firm that you wanna have a specific rate within for that specific uh, user type, you would then come into here and just add either the team, team member's information and then plug in the rate, or if it's for the entire firm, you would do everyone and then plug in that information. Now, I know you saw that I showed you the different templates that were inside of the settings, and that's something that you can actually apply here as well by hitting use template, and then you can add in and apply the rate. Now, you see here that the practice area appears probate, so I can go ahead and just hit apply. And now, once I've hit apply, you'll see that the rates for the team members automatically populate here for us. And this is done, again, by being inside of settings and just ensuring that you're adding that information into the bill settings area. So um, again, just go to settings and then bill settings, and then you want to make sure that you add it here under custom hourly rates. All right. So going back into the uh, presentation, This was something that I just went ahead and covered, being able to show you the billable hours. One thing that I also wanna make sure that I cover as well is the expenses. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So when you're in here, if you have a matter that you wanna add an expense to, all you would need to do is go to the expenses tab and then you would hit add. And if you have like an invoice or something like that um, for a specific uh, expense that you've exhaust, uh, covered for a particular matter, you would go ahead and add in that information here by just dragging it into the space down here. Now, if it were, it, and then it would bring up this window and then you would just plug in whatever attachment you wanted to for that matter. One thing you want to make sure that you do as well is that if it's something that you don't want to bill the client for, you do have the option here to add it as non-billable. And that will make sure that the information just shows up on the invoice. But instead of actually moving forward and billing the client for it, it's just going to show up as non-billable. And as you see here, this was an expense that was already plugged in by one of the users, and it shows that it was billable, and the amount is also here. And you can see that it wasn't invoiced yet, but the information is here as to what exactly the person uh, worked on that they needed to apply the expense for. So you also have the ability to add expenses by hitting the plus sign and then going to add expense. And then this will give you the ability to add the expense for any matter. Uh, whether it's for the one that we were just in or another one, all you would need to do is just click on add matter here and then select the matter that you want to add it to. 
and make sure that you add in the rate and you add in the description of what that information is. Now, when you add in non-billable, it brings up this window or this pop-up that allows you to instead uh, choose whether you wanna display on the invoice or not. And so by checking it, it's gonna make sure that it shows up on the invoice. Another thing is that you also have the ability to add in expenses for other users if you have permissions to do that within the locker system. And you can choose whoever you want to be the person that gets uh, assigned to this expense or any expense that you're working on. All right. So when it comes to um, custom rates for users and matters, this was something that I did spend a little bit of time on. And you do have the ability to add it for uh, each user, and it can be customized for different types of uh, matters. You also have the ability to have it be for everyone, and you do have the ability to add the custom hourly rate templates, which I did just show you just now. Now we're gonna go ahead and cover how to generate an invoice inside of Locus. But before I actually have us work on generating an invoice, I just wanna cover a couple of things that you wanna make sure that you have set up already in order to ensure that your invoice is set up properly. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you're in settings and you want to make sure that you have your information inside of the bill settings for the invoice templates. Now here you'll see that I already have a template created for uh, the law for a law office. But we can actually, if you want to create a new one, you would just hit add template and you would come into here. And if there was a particular color that you wanted to have for your firm, you would go ahead and select the color. If you have custom colors, you do have the option to add hex codes here. And this will allow you to add in the different color that you want for your particular uh, business or brand. You then want to make sure that you choose the kind of invoice theme that you want to go with you can there's three different options that you can choose from and it really just changes the flow of what it looks like some important things to make sure that you pay attention to is the currency if you're working with different people in different areas that work with different currencies you're going to want to make sure that this is uh, check to the proper currency that you're working with. And the beauty of having multiple templates is you have the ability to have multiple currency types depending on the template. So this one is the United States one. We're going to leave it as that. But if you wanted to have another one, you would just go ahead and select it. And then when you're naming your template up here, you would just make sure that you insert the name of the country somewhere in there so that you're able to differentiate it when you're working on the invoice. Another thing that you want to make sure that you have is the default due date. This is something that comes in very handy when you're working on uh, sending out an invoice because it will automatically show up when the invoice is due. And another thing as well is when you're working on sending out invoice reminders, if this information is inputted properly with the number of days when it's due, that will then better set up the invoice reminders and how they're sent out. We'll cover invoice reminders in a bit later on. Um, some other things to make sure that you pay attention to is the bill to information. You want to make sure that all of this, if you want to have it on the invoice or not, you check it off. So if you want to have the matter label on there or not, you have the option to take it off and you'll see that it goes away up here. And if you didn't want to have the issue date or any of this other stuff, you would just go ahead and select whether you want to check it on or off. That's going to be entirely up to you. Important to pay attention to, though, is going to be the company information. You want to make sure that you have your company logo in here if you have one. And if there's any information here that you don't want on the invoice, you would make sure that you check it off so that it doesn't show up. If you're not a firm that works with flat fees and you want to take that off the invoice, you do have the ability to do that. And you would just select whichever options you want in terms of what you don't want to have on there. So if we took flat fees off, you'll see automatically that that whole entire section just then disappears and it's no longer visible on the invoice. 
same thing is going to be for time entries and expenses. If you're a firm that only works with flat fees, you're going to want to make sure that you keep uh, time entries off if you don't really use them. Expenses, the same thing. Uh, other info, this would just be like the subtotal and it will also be at any discounts. So if you are not a, don't really typically give out discounts, you can definitely take that off the invoice. And you can also ensure that you have uh, terms on there. So you have the ability to show the terms or not to show the terms. And speaking of terms, when it comes to them, you have the option to add them in as a default here in the template as well. So if you have particular terms and conditions that you offer, you want to make, or that not that you offer, but that you want to ensure that you communicate to your clients, you're going to add in that information here and any notes. So if you want to say thank you for your business or anything like that, you have the option to add that here. If you don't want your invoice to show any outstanding invoices that are past due, you do have the option to take the take it off and it will no longer show up. And the same thing for the trust balance. If you're not a firm that typically uses trust accounts and have trust balances or work with retainers. When it comes to the credit balance, the same thing. If you don't really utilize uh, retainers or take trust payments you, and you don't want this on here, you do have the option to take that off as well. When it comes to the payment summary, that's something that typically every invoice should have, but you, if you don't wanna have it, you could take it off. And last but not least, the uh, trust request. This information here, if it's not necessary and you don't need it, you can take this off. So the beautiful thing about these templates is that you can really just customize it as much as you possibly want to. And in addition to that, you can have as many as you want and just name them differently. And here, it's important to note that you do have the option to set up an invoice template as a default. So that, that one, if you're gonna be using it on a consistent basis, you have the option to check it on or off here. In order to make sure that the information shows up properly when it comes to the name of the firm and all this information, when you're inside of your settings, you do have the ability to make sure that that information shows up properly under firm settings and company info. And here the company logo was inserted and the address and all of this. In order for the invoice to actually save, you have to make sure that you have a logo, the business name, the address, and the business phone number. These things are essential. If it's not on there, the invoice will not save to any of the matters and you won't be able to even send them out. All right, so now that I have said that, let's go ahead and look at how to generate an invoice. So you can do this by selecting your matter and then going to, um, actually, I apologize. You can do this by going to invoices. And once you're in invoices, you would then go ahead and select new invoice, and then you would go ahead from here and add in the matter that you want to go ahead and create the invoice for. And once you've done that, you're going to have to go ahead and select add on invoice activity. And that will then generate all of the time entries that we have populated, even the non-billable ones, as you see here, to generate on the invoice, any expenses as well. And you do have the option to check it on or off. And if there were only a specific time frame that you wanted to focus on, you do have the option to come in here and just select a particular uh, period of time. And if you want us to do a custom range, you can even select custom range and you would select the time period that you wanna do that for. I'm going to go ahead and just select everything here and just add it to the invoice so we can see what that looks like. A couple of things to uh, point out as well is going to be the invoice options up here at the top. As you see, the main template that I have as a default is the one that's showing up here. I actually have a trust balance for this particular matter, so that information is showing up here. And if you turn it on, it actually takes out the funds from here. And if you don't want to use it, you have the option to check it off. I'm gonna go ahead and hit to use the trust balance. And you'll see over here on the right in these options, you do have the option to even customize the invoice 
as you're working on it to send it out. So anything that you've already populated and saved under invoice templates, you have the option to modify them here on the invoice. If it was something specific that you wanted to change as a one-off for this particular matter. When it comes to the options here, you obviously can take off the, the trust balance. You can take off the operating balance and all of these things here. Important thing to pay attention to is the tax information that's here. So if you're uh, wanting to ensure that your firm takes out taxes, you're gonna wanna make sure that inside of your settings, you set this up properly. So once you're in bill settings, you're gonna wanna make sure that you go to tax settings and you have the option here to add in the name and the value of the tax for your particular state. Now, when you're in here, if this wasn't already here, you would just go ahead and hit add new tax, and then you would add in the state. And then if I wanted to make this the primary, I would just go ahead and take this off so that it's no longer checked and then check off the, the option that I want to be primary and save it. And then that information will become live on the invoice. All right, so going back into invoices, and you'll see here that the invoice that we were just working on is actually already right here. And then once you're here, you can actually still go in and edit it if you wanted to make any further changes to it. And once we're looking at this, you see that down here, it does show up that the, the trust balance is being applied here. So then the only thing that is remaining as an outstanding balance is $500 in, in, in payment that's being due. So you see here that it actually shows up that they're applying trust. I want to actually take us to processing or going over the trust request. So you do have the ability to do a trust request by selecting trust requests while you're inside of the invoices section of Locus. And then if it was a different issue date, you can change that here. You can also change the due date. Then you would go in and you would add in the client name and you would add in the matter. And then you would add in the amount, whatever amount that you would want for the trust amount, and then any information that you want to add as a note and then create. And here it is, this then creates a trust uh, request going to this person. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and right now it's currently in the draft state, if you wanted to go ahead and actually move forward with this and send this out, all you would need to do is go to send by email and this would send this invoice as a trust request to this client to receive payment. If you had a default email that you wanted to put in, you have the option to select it here, and then you would send this email off and it would send out to that person. Now, if it were an instance where you sent the invoice in another form, maybe you downloaded it and you, you sent it in another way, and you want us to just mark the invoice as sent, you have the ability to do that as well. And all you would need to do is select the invoice and then come up here to more actions and then mark it as sent. And you'll see here that this was an invoice that we actually marked as sent. So this was already taken care of. Another thing that we can actually do here is also a credit request. So if there's an instance where we've been issued a credit, we can go ahead and apply that here as well and add in the same, add in the information for that particular client so that we can go ahead and send that out. And then you would just add in the amount and then create. Now we can go ahead and mark this as sent and then we can come out of here. One other thing that we can actually do is go ahead and send out invoices in bulk. And in order to do that, we will want to go ahead and uh, select on this and then do bulk actions. And then we can actually send by email and send all these invoices out at one time. We also have the option to mark all the invoices sent here as well. 
if we wanted to mark all of them as, as being sent. If there were ever an instance where we wanted to add a payment, let's say we received a payment in a different form, like a check or something, or maybe they brought in cash, you do have the option to apply a payment for monies received. And then it could be a direct payment and you can have it go right into the law firm and then put the source as, actually, let me go back, sorry. You would leave it on direct payment and then you would select the option to either do cash and you can even do check and you can even do if, if it came through as a bank transfer. So I'm gonna leave it on cash. And then if you, there was any notes that you wanted to add to this, you can add it down here and go ahead and hit add. Yeah, so the balance that she owes is not really much. So I'm gonna select a different person that actually owes some money so that we can see that here. And then the invoices show up so we can just go ahead and put in that she paid $500 in cash. And then that go ahead and adds it. And now if you wanted to actually see that You can see it here under invoices. Okay, going back to the invoices section here, if we wanted to go ahead and add a discount to any particular invoice, we can go ahead and do that during the process while we're generating the invoice or after we've generated the invoice, if it was something that wasn't sent, we can go ahead and do that by opening up the invoice and editing it. And then we can add in the discount down here. So if it was a discount of $500, we can add it in. And um, actually, I, I apologize because it's in percentage. We can change it from percentage to dollars. And then once it's in dollars, we can put $500 and then it takes it out. And then if you wanted to actually keep it on percentage, you can change it and maybe put 20%. And then that will change it in this format as well. And then once you're done and you've added in this information, you can go ahead and hit save. And then that will actually update to show that the discount is on here. And you see it right here. All right. So I went ahead and I covered how to generate the invoice. We've applied taxes and discounts and things to an invoice. We've uh, worked with trusts and credit balances, but we've also shown what it looks like when invoices are outstanding. So um, moving on to another area that I wanna talk about, and this is gonna be how to streamline invoice payments. And we can actually add a manual payment, which you saw me do something like that already just now. And we also have the option to send payments out with a link. And to go ahead and work on that, I am going to select this one because we received some money by cash. And I just wanna go ahead and send this out to be able to receive the rest of the money. We have the ability to come into here and then go to send by email. And then we can send this to the client and that will then send the invoice to them for them to go ahead and make payment. If we wanted to send by link, we could always go ahead and go ahead and click on the invoice uh, payment link. And then we can go ahead and copy that. And from here, we would then just go into the matter And then once we're inside of the matter, we do have the ability to go ahead and to send them a email. And then once we're in here, we can set up an email and send it to them to say, please pay. Okay. 
if we wanted to do something a little bit different, we also actually have the um, ability to do it as a link. So uh, as a, a, a like a hyperlink. And we can select it here and then go insert link, bring in the link and we can send it off this way. And once your signature, your default signature is inserted, it will go ahead and send it out. And now we were able to go ahead and send the link to the client to be, and we see the email here was sent. Now, if we wanted to go ahead and apply a manual payment, we did something like that already. And remember, all we need to do is go to add payment and then we can add in that information here. All the invoices that are associated with that particular matter is gonna show up down here for us. And we then have the ability to add it in. In addition to just being able to apply payments in this format, if you have some uh, payment processor that you use like LawPay or Gravity Legal, you do have the option to add in that information under settings. And once you're inside of settings, you will wanna go to apps and integrations, and then you would go to online payments. And then you'll see the options here to be able to do uh, connect a Gravity Legal payment or a LawPay payment. and I am actually going to show us what it looks like when we're working with Gravity Legal to send um, uh, to see what it looks like on the Gravity Legal side for the the payment and then process that payment. So this is an invoice that was set up inside of um, Locus and the integration with Gravity Legal is already applied. And so what we want to do here now is we have the ability to go to the, um, to click on the invoice payment page. And if we click this option, we would then just the client, you would send this to the client and the client will actually be able to click on the link to be able to do this. And this is what they would be able to see once they are inside of the payment page. And another way that you can go about it doing it is do um, online credit payment. And this is also integrated with Gravity Legal as well. So both components are uh, integrated. So if you wanted to do it internally, you can do it on this side by doing online credit payment, or if you were sending the invoice to the client, you would be able to do that like this. And seeing the invoice, this is what it looks like on this side. And here are some entries that were non-billable. So you see that it shows up on the invoice, but it's crossed out in terms of not charging any money for it. And the client actually has the ability to download it from here and they can save it on their end. They can also even download it from here as well. Now to process this payment, they would just go ahead and hit pay and they would and then we mark the payment complete. I'm actually gonna go ahead and do this right now so that we can see what it looks like. Uh, give me a moment to insert some information here. And while I do that, I'm just gonna bring us back to the uh, PowerPoint screen so that my card information isn't showing up. So meanwhile, Kasita is uh, trying to do the payment for us on the invoice. Basically, we have two payment gateways that you can use, either LawPay or Gravity. You can set up an integration with any one of these, and this will allow you guys to take online payments from your clients. So basically, otherwise, the client would have to pay you via cash, check, e-checks, or bank transfers, and you would manually add the payments on Locus. So if you want to avoid that manual intervention on the payments, you can integrate with LawPay or Gravity and uh, any one of these. And then when you send the invoices to the clients, the payment link will be automatically attached to the email. So the clients will just have to click on the link like the Sita showed you and they'll have to just 
enter their card details and the payment will be done like this. All right, Dev, thank you so much for that. And then bringing this back up for us, you can see here that the payment was actually processed and the client has the ability to download the receipt here and also download the invoice. And then showing what it looks like inside of Locus for us here, it's gonna actually show that the invoice is paid here. And that fast, as soon as the client makes the payment, it shows that the payment was made and it also shows which account the payment was made to. So it was made to the operating account and this is the amount of the payment. And from our side, we have the ability to go ahead and download that invoice and save it if we want us to save it to the matter file for uh, future records or anything like that. All right, so taking, back a, taking us back into the uh, PowerPoint presentation. When it comes to uh, trust payments, we do have the ability to ensure that we set this up properly and have trust payments showing up inside of uh, the matter files as well. So going back into Locus and covering that, All right, yeah, so what we wanna make sure that we have inside of here is that when it comes to the, the invoices for trust payments, we can, like I said, cover it here by creating the trust request. And once the trust request is created and we actually receive that money, I'm gonna mark this one here as paid. And then once this mark is paid, you'll see that within the invoices section here, that now the total due has changed. And we'll see that the when it comes to the invoice here and you should look at it, it also is marked as paid. So the account has money that's reflected inside of the trust. So any other transactions that you work on on the invoice, you will have the ability to take it from that trust payment. So for example, um, like if I was to create an, a new invoice for this person, you'll see now that there aren't anything to invoice because everything's already invoiced. But if I created like some kind of entry for this person here and I made it a time entry that was, uh, let's say three hours. Let's say I worked on something for three hours. Oh, wait. I made a boo boo. All right. I'm just going to move on. Uh, to the area where we get to deposit the funds. So um, let's say that we wanted to show up that a payment is deposited. we can come into here and there's already like some trust money here already, but like, let's say we wanted to add that she gave us a check, we can add that in here. Oh, but there, I would need to 
as you see, there aren't any invoices here, so it's not even going to actually let me do that. So I would need to create an invoice for this particular person before I would even need to do that. So uh, let's see. I'm going to mark it as save. And then so now we have the all the entries here for this person. So now I would be able to go in and add the payment for this for, for this particular matter. And it's already actually started here, so I can go Sorry, actually, sorry, sorry, sorry. I can go here now and add in the information. And still, because there's a trust account balance, it's not bringing up any additional money to be paid. So I can actually take out the, let me, let me slow down, sorry. Um. Okay, let's go back into the invoice for Raquel. Okay, so Raquel has a trust balance. And if we pull this trust balance, then it will change Raquel's amount that she owes the firm. And it will deposit this money that she owes as a part of this particular invoice. And it's gonna be taken away from here. So if we use the trust balance to cover it, and then we mark it as save, we'll see that now the balance is different. So it's taken the money that was deposited to us, that that uh, trust balance of $1,500 that we received from her. And now the balance is only one fifty seven fifty eight. So it's, it's taken that money and, and, and credited it towards this invoice. So it's no longer uh, viable. And so now she owes us money. We would we'd be able to collect on new money for this particular money, person for the firm. Now, if we wanted to set up, um, one thing to note here is that in order to be able to send out any invoices at all, you would need to make sure that you have your emails synced up with Locus. So you're going to want to make sure that your emails are mapped up. And that would be the only way that you would be able to do that. That's one thing I forgot to cover is that you, you're going to want to make sure that you sync up your email. So under absent integrations, you will go to email and calendar, and you're going to want to make sure that your email is actually connected. And you'll see here that my email and calendar is actually already connected with this. So that's why I'm able to send out these invoices. So one, that's one important thing to know that you want to make sure that you do that. Taking us back into the PowerPoint presentation, we're going to now move into another area and we're going to go into setting up automatic reminders for your invoices. So earlier in the in this, I was talking about um, setting up uh, reminders. So we're going to go ahead and cover that quickly here. So once you're here inside of settings, you're going to want to make sure that you are going into <clears throat> your firm settings. And once you're in firm settings, you could then take it from here and go into your reminders. Okay. And inside of your reminders, you have the invoice reminders here and you can come in and 10 days after the due date of the invoice, you can have a reminder set up to send out to the client. And that's why it becomes important to make sure that inside of your, your invoice templates, you're ensuring that you have it set up with the right due date so that the system can send out the right the reminders in the right amount of time. You do have the ability to set up multiple reminders. You can just come down here and do add reminder and you can add an additional one. So let's say that you wanted to send a reminder out a couple of days before, you do have the option to come in here and click on before, and you can send out a reminder maybe three days before the invoice is due to let the client know that they have a bill that's becoming due, and you would then create the subject here and add in the information down here in the body. If you already have a template, though, that you wanted to utilize, you would then just come in here and select the template from the list of templates, and you would just make sure your naming convention is easy so that you're able to identify that template and then you'll go ahead and populate that invoice inside of the invoice. And this is what it looks like. So I know that this is 10 days and I know that we were talking about three days before. I just wanted you to be able to see what it looks like to be able to add a template to your invoice. Now, if someone made a mistake and just added in a template for a wrong period of time, if you just hit the X, 
it takes away that information. That information then does not get saved. So it's pretty easy to, you know, undo something that gets done when it comes to the invoice reminders. One thing I want to make sure that I say to you is that if you have a reminder and you realize that you don't need it anymore, you do have the ability to come here and hit remove. And it's going to ask you if you're sure, you're just going to go ahead and say yes. And then that takes away that particular uh, reminder from the list of reminders. Uh, you also have the ability to add task reminders and event reminders as well. And you know you can do that up to how you want to. So that's going to take care of what it looks like when it comes to an invoice reminder. And again, one important thing to make sure that I stress to you is that you're really gonna wanna make sure that when you're working on your invoice templates, your templates are set up properly so that the reminders can then follow the way that they need to. Taking us back into the presentation, I'm now going to cover uh, a workflow. And so going back into the presentation, oops, presentation, or actually before I cover workflows, I'm gonna, no, yeah, workflows. So when it comes to workflows, they're easy. It's an easy way for you to be able to automate uh, certain things and make it efficient. When it comes to invoices, you do have the ability to set up a workflow. If you want to have um, someone receive a payment or an invoice to make a payment as soon as you uh, set them up as a matter. So showing us what that looks like really quickly here, I'm gonna go ahead and take us back into Locus. And to do this, you wanna make sure that you're inside of automations. And when you're in automations, you would just do add workflow and it would then take you through the stages of how to create it. So I'm going to first show us the one that I had set up and that's right here. So when a matter is created, the system will then search the system for the client and then create a flat fee for that particular uh, client. And then it's going to actually send, uh, create an invoice for that particular flat fee. And then it's going to send an email out to the client to make them make that payment. And this is triggered by the in new matter being created. So when you're inside of the workflow, to the first thing that you would do is then select the trigger here, matters created. And if you have the trigger by anyone, that's gonna make it easy for it to be able to be initiated and started. You wanna make sure that you always name your workflow because having a name is gonna allow you to be able to identify it easily. And if you have a description, you can add that in here. Once you have that, you will then go ahead and hit continue. Uh, there are some entry rules that you can even set up if you wanted to, to and you can add conditions, but keeping it simple, um, as long as you create the matter and have it be created as the start trigger and have anyone, you would then go ahead and hit continue, and you would then set up where this happens. So if it's from the pipeline default and the stage is case assessment or whatever your stage would be, you would make sure that you have that set up. So if you have a different pipeline, you would make sure that you select the appropriate pipeline that's applicable for this particular matter type. And then whatever stage that follows up first within that particular pipeline, you would then go ahead and select that. And then you would select continue. From here, I then had it search for a client. So then it brings up the option for you to use this arrow key here with the three dots. When you click on it, it brings up this use matter value from trigger. It brings up all these options. And as long as you select matter client, it's gonna search for that matter client. And then you're gonna continue to next. From here, you wanna make sure that you have a firm understanding of like what your flat fee would be for that particular uh, client or matter type, and you're going to enter that information here. So if you know that um, you naturally always take a flat fee amount up front of $10,000 for uh, litigation cases, for example, you would then create this flat fee here, and then you would have it be the, you would set up your trigger date, and it would add the date for that. Now from here, you would then also make sure that you select the matter ID and your matter ID is gonna come from the trigger. So all you would need to do is select it here. Then you would select who the user is that would be uh, applying this flat fee and then you can add anyone that's listed under the users here. In addition to that, 
if you had a particular category that you wanted to apply, you can then add that in here. And any discount that you wanna have reflect on the invoice, you can have it show up here. Now, this is the description of what that flat fee will look like. And then you can hit continue and next. From here, I had it um, add in the matter client as the billing contact. And then you can also add in the matter ID here as well. Here, it's not required, so that's why I didn't add it here. You see the, the anything that has an asterisk, you have to add it, and so those are the things that I focused on. In addition to that, you can add the issue date, and then you can also add the due date. So if your due date deferred from your standard due date for the firm, you can then have the due date be different by adding in it to be whatever number of days from the trigger date. So the trigger date is just the date that this automation gets triggered. So when the matter is converted, that's the trigger date. And then you would go ahead and hit continue and next. And you have now what, what's set up here is an email. So you have the option to send an email with the invoice to the client and the invoice link is included. So what you'll do is select the person that's going to be the one to send this invoice out. Then you're going to also set up the, the who's going to receive it and you just put in matter client. You then also have the option to CC other people. If other people in the firm need to be notified once the invoice is sent out, you can add additional recipients here. And you can also make sure if you wanted to blind copy someone, you can also add them in here and just go ahead and select the person and it will blind copy them. If you wanted to remove anyone, you do have the option to hit the cash uh, trash bin on the right hand side and it takes them off. I set this up to be able to be personalized. So I added in the first name from the search client trigger. And once you hit the use uh, client value here, you then want to uh, select the first name and then you can add in whatever else you want as a subject. I added in the person's first name again here. And then I also ensure that I added in some information um, to send the email out with the link. So I told them that you know the link is below for them to go ahead and pay their invoice. Also here, you'll notice that the default signature is set up. So as long as your signature is set up for the firm, you, the default signature can be saved, can be applied. And then you will go ahead and hit save. And you'll see here that we basically walk through everything that encompasses setting up this workflow. The last thing that I want to cover today is actually going to be when it comes to... Uh, sorry, the customized user permissions. And to go over that, all you would need to do is when you're inside of Locus, you would go to your manage organization. And from here, you can uh, add in the different people that you want to, and then you can control what exactly they see. So if you don't want someone to see certain kind of things, you would then change their uh, their user level here. So accounting is something that's huge and invoicing is something that's huge. Another thing too is the um, the team activity. So if you don't want them to see everyone else's time entries and their expenses and how they're billing, you would then just go ahead and make sure that you select a member because the member wouldn't have the ability to see these team entries and they wouldn't have the ability to see invoicing or accounting or anything like that. So that's something that you would want to um, figure out internally in your firm to figure out what would make the most sense for you. And once you've identified the way that you want your, your people to be set up, once you're inside of users, you you have that option to change, to, to have it set up properly in here. And if you, if you wanted to change someone from one level to the next, you can go in and just click on it and that will change their role. There was one thing that I actually wanted you guys to see for invoicing, and I don't think that I got to show you. So let me actually show you that really, really quickly. And that's going to be what it looks like for the client when they receive the invoice, if they have access to the client portal. And let me actually pull that up for us. Hold on. Okay, so this is um, the client portal here. And this is someone that has access to the client portal. And once they're inside of the portal, 
if they uh, have any invoices that they need to pay, all they would need to do is click on make a payment and it will show up here. And if they click on their invoice, they have the ability to review the invoice here. And because uh, the, this particular, uh, because this particular one doesn't have the, um, the payment option here, you have the ability to download the invoice and send it off. And then if you, if it were the case where you're integrated with like a law pay or a gravity legal, you would have the option to have the person pay the invoice right from here, which I showed you guys already how to do, but this would be what it looks like from the client experience, from the client experience, once they have access to the client portal. And that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to show today. I hope that you guys were able to find this presentation helpful. And now I'm going to take it back over to Dev to, to say anything final. And if you guys have any questions or anything like that, I now welcome any questions that you guys may have. Uh, thank you, Kasita. That was really great of you to have us walk through from scratch how to do the invoicing and billing on Locus. And uh, we do have some questions. People have something in the q &A. So let me read it out so maybe uh, we can answer it together. So first is with Ivan. So he says, can you keep trust funds at client level if a client has multiple matters? So to answer that, Ivan, yes, you can have the trust funds uh, at the client level or at the matter level. That is completely up to you. So people who usually keep at client level are the ones that have uh, one client and have multiple cases associated with that client. So to just manage that on the client level, you will have to directly make a deposit onto the client's trust account and that's it. And then it's up to you whether you want to use that client level trust fund on matter one or matter two or matter three that's completely in your hands but yes you can do the trust funds on the client level as well and then we have Valerie so uh, she has a question if you add a flat fee should you add your time as not billable I've noticed that if you add your time as billable it will add to the flat fee on the matter so, Valerie, how the invoicing works is whatever time entries and flat fees you create on Locus, okay? And whenever you invoice them, whether it's billable or non-billable, they will be combined on the uh, invoice and they'll be adding up on the invoice. So, if it's billable, all the time entries and flat fees will be added up on the invoice. If your time entry is non-billable and your flat fee is billable, then your invoice, although it has both the flat fee and time entry, but the invoice will only show the amount for the flat fee because your flat fee was billable and your time entry was non-billable. So it's up to you of how you want to bill your clients. Okay, if you want to bill them on a flat fee basis, then you'll have to make sure that your flat fee is billable and your time entry is marked as non-billable so that the time entry is showing on invoice, but you're not billing the client for it. So you need to decide it of how you want to build the client. And then accordingly, you can shift if you want to make the flat fee as billable or time entry as billable or both. But they will eventually add if you make them as billable. It will not be like flat fee, uh, maybe like time entry will be subtracted from the flat fee. No, it will not do the calculations that way. It will only add. And I hope I was able to answer you. If you have more questions, you can let us know. And then... I see on the email reminders that you added custom fields within the email. How do you do that? Uh, Kasita, would you like to uh, show the email reminders of the invoices? Yeah, I can. And then um, I just showed up the example here of what it would look like if it were like billable and non-billable on the invoice. So um, really quickly here. So if it's a flat B and it was non-billable, you see that it gets crossed out, but it still shows up. And then also the time entry one, if it's a billable one, it also shows up here. And they're they're both showing up through the balance here, down here. Um, the question about the invoice. Uh, email reminders. The email, oh, the email reminders. Yeah. Um, let me go back.
Okay. So the the way that this came up is because I pulled it from the template. So I used a template that I had. And once I applied it, it brought this over. So when you're inside of your um, templates here, inside of automations, and you're in your email templates, you would just make sure that you set it up here. So that's how this came up. I, I added it in here and it added it over. And then in this information that's in here, all of this came from um, these merge fields. So all you would need to do, like for example, this field here that I added in for the, the name, I just pulled it from merge tags. And then I came over here to the contact fields and I pulled the contact first name. And then I just made sure that I put a comma after it. The same thing applies for all of these different fields that I have down here. I just went into each one of the merge fields. And if it's for the invoice, I just co covered the invoice fields. And then I just clicked on each one to add it in <clears throat> so that all the information populates on here. Once you have the information here, it then will, will save so that when you're inside of your settings and you're working on your reminders over here, you have the ability to just use your template. That's why I liked using the templates because it makes it more customized with these different tag fields because when you're just doing it inside of here, you can add it, but you can't see it all in the same way that you can when you're doing it inside of the other area inside of your automations inside of your email templates here. Okay, I guess uh, Lillian, maybe we were able to answer your question. If you have any further questions, uh, you can drop a message in the Q&A box. Then we have a question from Ken. So are all the invoices created in a matter viewable by the client in the portal? For example, if I build a legal assurance company on a matter, will the client see the invoice in the portal? So to answer that, Kent, client will only see the invoices in the portal in first case if the matter is or, or the lead is shared with the client on the portal. Second, if you have uh, sent the invoice, like if the invoice is in the sent status, only then the client will be able to see the invoice on the client portal. So two things uh, are mandatory. The matter or lead is shared with the client and the invoice is in sent status. Only then the client will be able to see invoice on the portal. Um, then we have a question. Is there a way to filter the invoice reminders sent for outstanding balance and trust request? I want to send a different invoice reminder for each invoice and trust request. Uh, so to answer your question, uh, the invoice reminders that you create in settings, these are default reminders. So it's not uh, like you can customize uh, what reminder goes out for what kind of invoice. These reminders will by default work on all the invoices or the trust requests that you create. So this is not uh, like a choice uh, for which invoice I use, which reminder. This is by default. So here you cannot customize. Here you can only customize one thing, how and when you want to send the email reminder and from whom the email reminder should go out, whether it's from Locus or yourself or someone else from the firm and what email template you want to use or uh, the message that you want to customize. Only these things are customizable. Otherwise, the reminders work by default for all of your clients. Uh, I guess we've covered all the questions. Anybody else has any further questions about whatever we have dis uh, discussed today? Sita, would you like to add anything meanwhile? Um, no, I, all I really want to say, honestly, is thank you all for being here and for showing up today. And if you have any additional questions regarding anything involving setting up uh, your system, whether it's regarding accounting or billing or whether it's an automation or a workflow or even email templates, anything along those lines, you can definitely feel free to get in touch with me. I am always available and accessible to answer questions. Um, so yeah, just you can get in touch with me and um, my information is all the way in the beginning. Sorry about that, but yeah, this is my information. Feel free to send me an email. I think that I also uh, shared Dev. 
I'm not sure if you posted it or not, a contact form that if you want to fill out a contact form, the, uh, I think the, let me share the link with you so that you can do that. And then you can get in touch with me if you have anything that you want to ask in terms of questions. So let me share the link with you guys. And again, thank you all so, 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 so much for being here today. I really, really, really appreciate it. And I really hope that you found everything helpful. And um, yeah, thank you all for your time. Okay, so I guess we've covered all the questions. So thank you so much, guys. And thank you so much, Kasita, for hosting this webinar for us and sharing your valuable thoughts on how to uh, deal with the billing and accounting for the clients. So guys, uh, I'll start the poll in the webinar. So you can uh, like choose the topic for the next webinar also you'll receive a survey link after that so maybe you'd like to rate us how the how was the webinar or you would like to share any suggestions you have and then uh, uh hopefully we were able to answer all of your questions if anybody has any questions you can reach out to us on support or if you need help uh with building out lockers or building out workflows you can reach out to casita uh, her email is there on the screen or you can reach out to us as well and ask her for your uh, for her contact information we will share uh, the information with you and she'll help you build out workflows or, uh, or any other document templates in take form or she'll guide you through the process if you need any help uh, after yeah. this you will uh, get the email with the youtube link once it's uploaded and uh, the video will be there on a YouTube channel and Kasita's information will also be there. So please feel free to contact her or us anytime you need any help with setting up automations or setting up invoice support blocks. Yes, and I also shared the contact form in the chat. So if you guys want to fill out the contact form to get in touch with me or send me an email, find me. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm <laughs> on Instagram. I have a YouTube channel posting weekly about Locus and how to better use Locus. So you could definitely find me any way that you want. And I'll, I'll help you in any way that I can for sure. Thank you so much, Kisita. That's what it's here. That was really helpful of you. And okay, guys, I think all your questions have been answered. Zayan, I've answered your question as well. So thank you so much, guys, for taking our time for joining today's webinar. Hopefully, we'll see you next month with a new topic. And uh, if anybody has any suggestions for the topic, they can always reach out to Locus Support and uh, we can have a webinar based on that topic. And at the end, I'd like to thank Kasita for investing so much time and uh, making this web a webinar happen. Thank you so much. And uh, we hope to continue webinars and we hope to continue doing webinars with you. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day. We'll end this webinar now and I'll send you the YouTube links after this webinar in the emails. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.